Hey everybody, I'm going to do a video on the development of this variable speed prop. So a little bit of backstory on this. Ten years ago, as you know, I was developing some of my own carbon fiber propellers. And then about uh, five years ago, six years ago, is when I developed my six-bladed carbon fiber props. And um, the reason I first did the first carbon fiber props was to build a four-bladed prop that looked scale for my C-130 project back in the day. Same time, there was a guy overseas that was building a really nice variable speed prop and was working really well. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of him, but um, his work was, was pretty phenomenal. So all I'm doing is scaling up pretty much his design. I also designed uh, 10 years ago this hub and experimented with the... Uh, what I call these bearing holders, which are the blue things in this picture. And uh, I'll click on one here for you. So this right here is what holds the, the bearing. So if we go into a section here and we zoom in here, you're going to see a couple of things going on. First of all, you see the two bearings that basically hold the quarter inch stainless steel shaft in place. Then there's a thrust bearing right here because as this thing's spinning, this is typical force, puts an enormous amount of G-force on this mechanism. Right here is a basically a uh, 6061 aluminum disc that has a pin in it, and that's how you get your available pitch. But I just want people to understand that there is a threaded stud that goes into this and actually this is drawn a little bit wrong keep in mind everybody this is my early development okay i know there's already people telling me this won't work as soon as i spin it up and they don't understand the backstory and they definitely don't know that this system's been around 10 years but uh it'll be threaded right here and this will be basically a uh, 440 stud with the end threaded so you'll have to shear a 440 stud to get the stainless steel shaft to come out of this. Now keep in mind, this is all going to be pretty lightweight. It's going to be carbon fiber propellers. So um, the way the variable pitch part works on this, hang on, let me go back. So this plunger here will have a bearing back here, which I haven't drawn because this is my early development. And this shaft and this mechanism here all spins with this gear. So this is what turns the propeller. This plunger here that I call it right here will move forward and backwards around 10 millimeters. When that 10 millimeter moves, it's pushing these pins. And those pins rotate on the axis here. And that's how you get your pitch. Okay? So um, 10 years ago when I designed this, I just drew it up in 3D. I didn't apply any parts to it that were real. All the parts in this drawing have McMaster car uh, part numbers to it. The bearings do, the thrust bearings do, the 440 bolts, the 256 studs, um, the stainless steel shaft. Um, you know, this is all going to probably be, be 60, 61 aluminum. Um, this, because, you know, if you've been watching me build my, my ultralight, I've been TIG welding everything, and I TIG welded up my fuel tank. So I'm going to TIG weld this entire um, mechanism right here as one piece. Hang on a minute. So this entire piece here will be one uh, TIG welded up piece. So this will be a piece of uh, quarter inch flat aluminum. Um, this will be, uh, I believe it's one inch aluminum tube. Um, I'm sorry, rod that I will, uh, you know, machine out the insides to press the bearings into. So, um, I just want to give a little update on my variable, variable pitch prop. Um, I wanted to get a little bit farther before I started doing videos on it, but I've had some naysayers out there basically saying this will never work and I know it will work. Now, I do have to figure out if I'm going to use belt drive or gear drive back here. I experimented, as you know, um, 10 years ago with uh, uh, the nylon gears, the uh, heavy-duty nylon gears, and, and it went really, really good. Now, would these nylon gears last indefinitely? No. But if I can get eight or nine hours and then start noticing wear, and I'll just change them out each time, 
um, I'd be happy with that. The reason the belts make me a little bit nervous is I've had belts slip. And, and you know, the cog belts, <clears throat> like you use with a 3D printer, they tend to wear really quick. And if you use a belt like on a supercharger, it's hard to find them to turn these small radiuses. But look, everybody, I'm very early in my development here. I, I may find the right belt and pulley uh, system that I want. I'm just right now still very much in early development of this. This is a Hacker A60-16L that I tested with my uh, all my carbon fiber props back in the day. I'll try to put a link in this. I think the video is too old for me to put a link in the video to tie it back to where I showed you all how to build your own carbon fiber propellers. But if you go to my YouTube and you look through my videos, which there's a ton of them, you can find um, how I made my carbon fiber propellers myself. So um, now, what do I think are going to be the hard parts on this airplane? It's going to be the head. I mean, without a doubt. To um, take 6061 aluminum and, and machine this and get all the holes lined up and get everything right. Um, you know, I, I don't show right now the 440s that hold this together. Um, all this would be Loctited, of course, because this thing will just be creating incredible centrifugal forces. I'm not showing the thrust bearing right here yet, and I'm not showing the thrust bearing back here yet because you know there's going to be thrust of this trying to spin away from the device. So just so you know, this green rod moves in and out and changes the pitch. But there'll be a bearing here where then it's connected to a push rod that goes to a servo, a high torque servo. This is going to be spinning, so I have to have a way to translate that spinning back into a stationary rod. Okay. So hopefully, um, and there'll be screws and bolts and stuff that I'm not showing. Hang on, where are they at? Oh, I didn't show them yet. There'll be um, a screw that's going down through this gear into this purple, because the purple is what turns the head. Um, there'll be a, a, a uh, you know, a, a screw that goes into um, a bracket that I'm designing that will thread onto the hacker. So I am going to 3D print every bit of this just to make sure the functionality, okay? None of those 3D printed parts will go into the flight hardware. All of this is aluminum, okay? And this may be a tougher aluminum than 6061. I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, everybody. I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing. So you can understand how this comes together. This right here, this ring will slip on and off. So this, let me go find that ring. So that ring slips on and off, and then this ring slides off because that's what holds the rear, bear, rear bearing to the uh, hacker motor. Okay, now I have six of these motors, and you really want that back uh, bearing if you're doing torque and stuff on the motor mount it comes with. I don't really probably need this bearing back here, but the fact that I am going to have these teeth crushing against each other, it might want to make this motor do something wonky. So... That's pretty much it, everybody. I want to do this quick little video because I'm posting this on uh, Facebook and already have uh, the professors of engineering telling me that this won't work. And uh, I know it will work. There's a guy been having one for running for 10 years and it's working perfect. And um, I know my early design work on this was really, really promising. I just had too much going on. And plus, machining this head 10 years ago with my lathe and mill I own. Uh, I just didn't have the guts. I didn't have the comment. Uh, I, I didn't have the, uh, I guess I just didn't have the self-confidence to take this on 10 years ago. Plus, I wasn't TIG welding. If you've been following my air bike build, my ultralight, you see how good I've gotten at TIG welding. And TIG welding up that fuel tank for it was really, really rewarding. So rock on, everybody. And I will see you next time with an update on this. I am going to probably next weekend or this next coming weekend start 3D printing some of these parts just to screw them together to make sure that in reality, when I hold it in my hand, that the, the parts look right. Sometimes I design stuff too small, and then when I go to build it in real life, it's just too small. It's going to be too weak, or it's not going to hold together. Well, that's it, everybody. Hope you understand that this is an early development. If you're one of my longtime fans, thanks a lot. If you're new to my uh, YouTube channel, please subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time. Rock on, everybody, and please be safe. Bye-bye.